Many of us have heard about cryptocurrencies, especially about Bitcoin, the first and most famous of all, and perhaps also the term blockchain. But do we have any idea what these concepts really are and how do they work? When you ask what a cryptocurrency is, you can receive a formal response such as it is an internet-based medium of exchange which uses cryptographic functions to carry out financial transactions. However, this, to ordinary people, doesn't say much and doesn't quite answer the question. So let's look for a definition easier to understand. In essence, a cryptocurrency is nothing more than a series of records in a database, which no one can change unless a specific set of conditions is met. This may sound like a very ordinary and unsophisticated, but if we give it a thought, this is what defines a currency. When we want to withdraw money from the bank, either through a transfer or in cash, the system or the cashier must confirm that we actually have the capital available to make such withdrawal. And how is that achieved? Querying a database of records of operations that we have made over time, having their entirety generate such a balance, which shows that in fact we have a certain amount of capital which we can dispose of. The cryptocurrencies work in a similar way. Operations or transactions are generated which are stored in a database that serves as a record to be able to know exactly the balance of the account of each member of the system and validate if any specific operation may or may not be performed. It seems simple, right? Then, what makes cryptocurrency so special and at the same time so complex to understand for the general public? Well, the essential difference is that while you have an account in a given bank and you use a currency from a country whose behavior is governed by a central bank, Cryptocurrencies lack such an entity. There is neither the bank where you have your money, nor who regulates it. In a nutshell, cryptocurrencies are fully decentralized. But you will wonder, how is this possible? How is it that something like this can exist? We owe this to Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he is. Since to date, it is not known for sure if it is a person or a group of people who used such pseudonym in 2009 when the birth of Bitcoin was announced. It was not the first time that a digital currency was created. Since the 90s, there were several attempts. However, none of them had achieved the aforementioned decentralization. It just seemed impossible, until Satoshi Nakamoto appeared. And how did he do it? In a relatively easy, but very intelligent way. He took a technology designed for something else and adapted it. For those who are used to platforms called peer-to-peer -peer or point-to-point, -point, such as BitTorrent, Emil, and some others, they will be familiar with the concept of having movies, series, and programs available for download, distributed throughout a whole network of computers that share them, and through torrent tools, can be accessed by anyone, taking fragments of one PC or another, depending on availability, speed, etc., to finally be able to download the complete file to our computer. Well, it turns out that Satoshi Nakamoto took that concept and brought it to the financial arena, making sure that the database in which transactions are registered was distributed among countless PCs worldwide, called nodes, being updated almost simultaneously and allowing any operation to be carried out between two parties wherever they are, and be validated in a matter of seconds. That is, the complete database, with all transactions, and therefore the balances of each account, is stored in a very large number of computers at once. Each transaction is a file protected by means of a private digital key, and accessible only to the one who performs such transaction. Once signed, it is transmitted to the network and sent from peer to peer. The transaction is known almost immediately throughout the network, but only after a certain time since it was confirmed. The database that stores all transactions is what is called the blockchain. It is called that way because it is really a change of transaction blocks that are added one after the other as they are executed. This has enormous implications when it comes to the security of transactions, since when a transaction is pending confirmation, it can be altered or forced, and when one performs an operation that is not possible to validate at the moment, it is prone to double spending. However, having such a kind of database and operating with this peer-to-peer -peer network once a transaction is confirmed, there is no way to change it, nor reverse it, or anything, 
It is not a single computer that contains information, there are thousands, and there is no way to go and modify something that was already validated by a huge number of machines. For a transaction to be registered as valid, at least 51% of the network nodes must agree, which makes it very difficult for someone to take control of a successful cryptocurrency and put the system at risk. In fact, this quality of cryptocurrencies makes them safer than traditional ones. On the other hand, only the so-called miners, which can be said to be a special type of node, are authorized to confirm transactions. It is their job in a cryptocurrency network. They take the transactions, mark them as legitimate, and distribute them to the nodes of the network. After a transaction validated by a miner is confirmed by the consensus between the nodes, each node or peer must add it to its database, becoming part of the blockchain. Of course, since there is no central agency or regulatory entity, and you do not need to ask anyone for permission to be a miner or node, this type of mechanism could be abused by any of the participant parties, or if anyone were to create thousands of peers and forced transactions, it would completely break the system. That is why Satoshi set the rule that miners must invest some work on their computers to qualify for that task. To do this, before being able to sign the transaction as legitimate and distribute it throughout the network, they must solve a kind of riddle or cryptographic problem that allows connecting the new transaction or block with the previous one. This is called proof of work. After finding the solution, the miner can build a block and add it to the blockchain. As an incentive, you have the right to add a transaction called Coinbase, which gives you a specific number of coins or tokens, apart from charging a fee for securing the transaction. Therefore, tokens can only be created when a miner solves a cryptographic puzzle. And since the difficulty of such a puzzle increases the level of investment in computer power that all miners can make, there is only a specific number of cryptocurrencies that can be generated at a given time. And this is a consensus that no peer in the network can break. In addition, most cryptocurrencies have a limited supply of tokens since their creation. For example, the available bitcoins are decreasing and will reach their final number near the year 2140. Now, for people to use a cryptocurrency, it is necessary that they have a public key, which can be compared to a bank account number and that everyone can know, and a private key which is equivalent to the PIN that only we know and that serves to sign the transactions. The private key is a randomly generated text, but which is then transformed using mathematical operations called hash, so that it can meet certain security features, while the public key is generated from the private key by means of a cryptographic algorithm. Additionally, to store your tokens you need an electronic wallet, which is basically a software, local or in the cloud, that contains the user's private key, which is used in conjunction with the public key to mathematically validate that whoever performs each transaction is who claims to be. Associating the wallet or private key with a real person is not necessary, which gives a certain level of privacy to those who use cryptocurrencies. To receive payments, it is necessary to provide an electronic address, which works much like an email, and is a string of around 34 characters, which is generated in the same wallet by performing a cryptographic operation on the public key, and which should be, preferably, a different wallet for each transaction to be made. Although they have an interesting potential to change the financial market in the future, cryptocurrencies also have their negative side. On the one hand, given their popularity in recent years, they were subject to mass speculation, bringing their prices to unprecedented levels and without any fundamental reason, and then falling sharply, thus demonstrating a high level of risk for investors and institutions, not counting the number of different cryptocurrencies that flooded the market, looking for the opportunity to take a piece of the cake. It is enough just to mention the cryptocurrencies with the highest market capitalization as of today. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Tether, which lead a list of more than 2,000. On the other hand, the anonymity that can be had in this type of currency makes them widely used to carry out transactions of illegal activities. Additionally, although its operation is safe, the exchange centers where people can trade them as if they were any currency have proven not to be so much and have been the target of innumerable frauds and robberies, putting at risk the capital of small and large investors, as well as the credibility in this model. Moreover, if a person comes to have his wallet in the cloud, and the service that provides it has a security flaw, he is exposed to having his private key stolen and all his coins emptied. 
in the absence of a central authority that monitors suspicious or fraudulent operations, coin that goes away, coin that does not come back. And, as mentioned before, when the 51% consensus was discussed, small cryptocurrencies may be subject to schemes of malicious people to take control of them and manipulate them. It is likely that most of the thousands of the currently existing cryptocurrencies disappear in the long term, and only a few survive. However, what will undoubtedly last is the blockchain, since it has proven to be a very powerful tool to decentralize information, which not only has to do with financial operations, and it has many more applications, in sectors such as health, government, real estate, supply chain, and intellectual property, among others. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and family so we can do more like this. Thank you.